Hey guys, what's up? Uh, my name is Calvin. I'm an Owl Moves teacher. Um, I actually just released a program called Core Max Challenge, so that's an awesome one. Check that one out. I'm going to be leading you through a vinyasa flow class today. Uh, this is my first time doing the live via Allo Moves, so kind of bear with me. One cool thing is I get to see all your comments, so comment as we go through. Like, I like that, I hated that, I hate you for doing this, whatever, it's fine. The interaction is really, really nice because it makes it feel a little more like teaching than just leading you through a class. Um, we're going to have pretty much like a hip focus for today with a little bit of stability interwoven, which is always uh, one of my favorite things to do. And then I practice with like a block or two always. So if you're at all stiff, grab a block. And then once you're ready, we're going to get started. So what you're going to do is you're going to start out on your back and have that block handy. Take your hands on your belly, right around the navel, knees bent. Start to breathe in and out of the nose, but try to breathe into the hands. So feel how on the inhale, the belly rises. On the exhale, it softens down. And I'm going to be talking, so I won't be practicing ujjayi breathing, but at home I would suggest in and out of the nose, across the back of the throat. Nice, firm breath. Awesome. Now from here, what you're going to do, what's up, Teresa? Go ahead and take your block between your thighs. I'm going to start with just some hip stuff. So. With the block between your thighs, lowest setting. If you don't have a block, just do this with your legs together, but a block's better. Or even if you don't have a block, just put your fist between your thighs. Lift your right foot up to the height of your hip. You can keep your head and shoulders down or you can lift the chest up, kind of like a crunch. Now take your right foot as far as you can to the right so you work internal rotation of the hip. Thanks, Nat. Thanks, Lily. And then you're gonna take that right foot as far as you can to the left so you work external rotation of the hip. We're just going to do two more rounds of that. So you'll take the leg out, so the leg's in internal rotation. And then you'll externally rotating, swing that right foot to the left. One more time, right foot out to the right. And then bring it back to the left. And set it down. Left leg up. Take the foot out to the left, internally rotate. Don't be frustrated if one side is significantly different than the other. It's actually quite common. And then on your exhale, let's take that left foot as far as you can to the right, working your external rotation. And then we'll come on back, foot to the left. And externally rotate. One more time, internally rotate. And externally rotate. Now from here, you're going to lift your knees up above your hips. Let's keep the block there. Hands behind your head, so the chest lifts a little bit higher, and you're just going to internally rotate. Take your feet as far apart as you can. Keep the chest up so the upper abdominals engage a little bit. Then bring the feet back in line with the knees. Lift your legs up. Squeeze the block. Lift your arms high. Stretch your legs forward. Stretch your arms back. Bend your knees in towards your chest. Reach your arms forwards. And then knees above the hips, hands behind the head. Take the feet as far apart as you can. Internally rotate. Bring them back in, stretch your legs up, squeeze the block, point the toes, lift your arms high, lift your hips up, lift your feet up, arms back, legs forward, squeeze the belly in for a breath, bend your knees in, arms forwards, and then knees above your hips. One more time, let's take those feet as far apart as we can, and hold for three, two, one. Set your feet down, keep the feet wider than the knees, set your head and shoulders down, interlace your fingers. Flip your palms towards the back of the mat. See if you can feel like you slide the side ribs a little bit further from the outer hips. You get a little wrist and shoulder stretch of your elbows straight and awesome. If not, no biggie. And then take that block, place it to the side for now. Hug your knees into your chest and come on up to seated. Once you get to seated, we're going to come into hands and knees. You're going to take your left hand, turn it backwards, so you get a little wrist and forearm stretch, and you're just going to pause here. Draw the belly in and round your back like cat pose, and then reach the chest forward like cow, and turn the hand forwards. Turn your right hand backwards, so we get a little wrist stretch. Start by just holding that cat pose, draw the belly in, tuck the chin in lightly, round your back. Tip the pelvis, reach the chest forward, send the chest forwards.
turn your hands forwards. Downward facing dog. Bend your knees a bunch. Lift your hips high, wrap your triceps down. And then as you shift forward, straighten your legs and lower to the floor. Once you get here, reach your toes back, reach your arms forward, slide them back a few inches so the chest is lifted. And then just a little bit of stability work. You're gonna lift your right arm and your left foot and set them down. Lift your left arm and your right foot, set them down. We're gonna do five rounds, that was one. Right arm, left leg, and down. Left arm, right leg, and down. Right arm, left leg, and down. Left arm, right leg, and down. Two more, right arm, and down. Left arm, and down. Last time, right arm, and down. Left arm, and down. Now from here, what I want you to do is slide your hands back in line with your shoulders. Your two options. First option is just gonna be lift your elbows as high as you can for a little more active stretch. Second option, the right arm will stay in line with the shoulder. The left arm will come onto the block and you'll press the block down, lifting the shoulder higher. It's a little more of like a passive stretch because you have a little bit of leverage. You'll hold for three, two, one. You'll release it down. Those of you that are not using the block, you'll inhale back up and just hover, lifting the elbows high. Those of you that are, the block goes under the right shoulder. Lift that shoulder high, almost let the chest sink and then reach it forwards a little bit. Press the feet down so the kneecaps and quads lift up. Go from Spain. And then release it down. From here, let's push up to hands and knees. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach your left arm back alongside your body. Reach your right leg back. So essentially it's like bird dog, but the arm reaches back instead of forwards. Grip through the fingertips of the right hand. On your exhale, you're gonna take your right knee to your right tricep, lift the knee high. Inhale, extend the leg out. Exhale, knee to tricep. Extend the leg out. Exhale, knee to tricep. Extend the leg out. Keep the foot in the air. Set your left hand down. Curl your left toes under. Pull your right leg up and back and open the hip up. So try to lift the right knee really high away from the floor. And then with one nice clean swoop, we're gonna step your right foot outside of your right hand. The music's too loud. All right, so from here, your options. Set the back knee down, so a little stretchier. If you wanna keep the leg straight, even better. With the foot outside of the hand, on your inhale, lift your right arm up to the ceiling, turn your chest. On your exhale, try to tap your right elbow down to the floor. Two more times. Inhale up. Exhale, tap. Inhale up. Exhale, tap. And then take your hand down. Step back to plank. Pull your hips back, down dog. Reach your hips back. Turn the heels out lightly and grip through the fingertips. And then shift forward to plank, lower your knees down. From hands and knees, right arm reaches back alongside your body. Just stretch your left leg back. Grip through those left fingertips, the muscles on the top side of the forearm engage. On your exhale, left knee, left tricep. Inhale back. Exhale, knee to tricep. Inhale back. Exhale, knee to tricep. Inhale back. Foot stays up, right hand comes down, curl the right toes under, lift your left leg up and back and open the hip up. Lift that left knee real high so the pelvis turns, feel like the right hip draws back and in lightly. And then step your left foot outside of your left hand. The right hand stays down, inhale, peel that left arm up, turn your chest. Exhale, tap the elbow down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Now from here, hand down, step back to down dog. From your down dog, step your right foot forward between your hands, slide your hands back, shift your hips back as you straighten the right leg. Now as you do that, let's start to bend the right knee. Press the right heel firmly into the mat and feel like you kind of scrub the heel back as you reach your chest forwards. So you feel a little bit of tension in that back leg hamstring stuff, but you're not locked out at the knee. Chest is reaching forwards. If you're stiffer, have your blocks handy. 
And then from here, as the chest is reaching forward, let your back round a little bit, straighten the right leg, get a deeper stretch through the back leg. Inhale, reach your chest forward, press the palms down or the fingertips, lift your foot off the floor for three, two, one. Set the foot down, shift forward, step back to down dog. From down dog, step your left foot forward, put your right knee down, shift your hips back, have those blocks handy. And as you straighten, start to put a little bend in the knee, feel like you're digging that left heel down into the floor, pulling the heel back as you reach your chest forwards. So it almost feels like it's a little more of like a strength-based sensation. And then as you straighten the leg, let your back round and fold. Inhale, reach your chest forwards, press the hands down, lift that left foot up for three, two, one. Set the foot down and step to the front of your mat. Once you get here, inhale halfway and exhale full. Inhale all the way up, lift your arms high, hands together at your heart. Once you get to the front of your mat and stand up, go to the closest wall. We're just going to stretch the shoulders a little bit more before we do any sun salutes. So we all have a wall. At your wall, first thing you do, fingertips up the wall. You're going to stick your butt out towards the middle of the room and sink your chest towards the wall. Slide the sternum higher. Take the gaze up so you get a little stretch in the back shoulders and upper back for three, two, one. As you come off the wall, right arm goes on the wall, right shoulder on the wall, and then just look past your left shoulder into the center of the room. This is a brief stretch for three, two, one. And we'll switch sides. Left shoulder on the wall, look past the right one. For three, two, one, and come on back. As you get to the front of your mat, I like to practice hip width apart. It just feels softer in my low back. We're just going to do two rounds of Surya Namaskar A. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale halfway, step back to plank, shift forward, lower halfway or all the way, roll over your toes, upward facing dog or cobra, and pull your hips back. Now in this down dog, we're going to do a one arm down dog, so just reach your left arm back alongside your body. If you want more than this, reach your right leg back as well. Set the hand down, step your right foot forwards, inhale halfway, exhale full. Inhale all the way up, hands to your heart, inhale arms up, exhale full. Inhale halfway, step back to plank, shift forward, lower halfway, roll over your toes, up dog, and down dog. And same thing, right arm reaches back alongside the body, and if you want more, the left leg will reach back as well. And you're here for three, two, and one. Set your hand down, set your foot down, downward facing dog. Now from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take your feet as wide as your mat, walk your hands back to your feet. Once you get here, hold your elbows, hang down the center, and for today, let's just kind of pulse. So feel like you kind of drop your torso down and then you lift it back up a little bit. So there's almost a little bouncing sensation to get into the back legs. And then come on up to standing. So from here, step into the center of the mat. And you guys just kind of got to bear with me on some of the weird stuff today. So with your hands on your hips, you're going to bend your knees a little bit. Your left heel is going to lift off the floor. We're just going to work a little bit of hip stability now. So all I want you to do is start to tap the left toes forward and then tap them back. We do that five times. So that's two, three, four, and five. From here, the left knee lifts as high as you can and you externally rotate without setting the foot on the knee. So you fight to lift that left heel as high as you can. You get the outer hip external rotators to work for three, Two, one. Now from here, the right knee stays bent. Stretch your left leg back. So it's like a bent leg warrior three. 
If this is too hard for you, put your hands on blocks. If not, work the bounce. You're here for a couple breaths. Send the chest forward, point through the toes of the left leg so it's softer in the low back. Then, I want you to straighten your right leg. Lower your left foot so it hovers just off the floor and swing that left foot out to the right so you can get into that outer right leg hip stuff. And you'll hold for three, two, one. Then your left ankle will cross in front of your right. As you fold, you're gonna walk your hands to the left and draw your right hip back. Again, to get into that upper outer leg hip stuff. We'll hold for three, two, one. Come on back to the center. Roll up to standing slowly. And we'll come into the second side. So hands come to the hips. Bend your knees. Get that right heel nice and light. Tap forwards. One, two, three, four, five. And that left hip starts to fire quick. Keep the leg bent. As you lift the right knee, you externally rotate. Lift the heel as high as you can. And you're fighting to really lift that heel high and drop the knee down. Keep the chest tall. Keep that left leg bent. A couple more breaths. And then as you bring the knee in, keep that standing leg bent. The hips should be a little shaky at this point. Stretch your right leg back. Point through the toes, chest forwards. You might even want to reach your arms forwards. You'll notice the bent leg version is far more accessible for the arms forward. And again, it's totally fine to have your hands on blocks. And then you're just going to straighten that left leg. Lower the right foot till it feels like it's close to the floor. Swing the right foot as far as you can to the left. And hold for three, two, one. Cross your right ankle in front of your left as you fold. Walk your hands to the right and draw your left hip back. A couple slow breaths. And then come back to the center. Step your feet as wide as your mat. So heels on the mat, toes off the mat. Come into a squat with your butt at around the height of your knees. Press into your heels. If you want to, you could lift the toes up. Try to have decent posture with the torso. So a lot of us will lean forward. That's okay. Just try to lift the chest. As you press the heels down, open the knees as far apart as you possibly can. So you feel that outer glute start to fire. The line for the hips is more or less in line with the knees. A little above, a little below is fine, but it's not malasana. And you'll notice as you hold, the hips want to get up here. Stay down here. Keep fighting to open those knees wider. And we're here for three, two, one. Come on up to standing. And then step up to the front of your mat. Inhale, circle your arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step back to plank. In your plank, lift your right foot an inch. Come up onto your left fingertips. Be happy here. Maybe left arm forwards. Set it down. Right foot down. Left foot lifts. Come up onto your right fingertips. Maybe right arm forwards. Set it down, pull your hips back, shift forward, hands and knees again. So again, this is going to be a point where if you're stiffer, you'll do this with your hands on the blocks. If you're tighter in the hips, we'll say. I'm going to demo it with hands on the blocks, but you can do it with your hands down on the floor. And what you're going to do is reach your right leg back on your exhale. Go ahead and drop a note if you're following along on this one. And on your exhale, I'm going to take that right leg, swing it out. I'm going to hover it off the floor, outside of the hand. I'm going to lift the knee as high as I can for three, two, one. Extend the leg back and set it down. Reach your left leg back. On your exhale, the leg goes outside of the foot. I fight to lift the knee as high as I can for three, two, one. Extend it back, set it down. Okay, so if that was a lot, you're going to stick with that. If not, you're going to level it up a little bit. Your left arm will reach back. Your right leg will reach back. On your exhale, that right leg swings out outside of the hand. You fight to lift the knee for three, two, one. Extend it back. Set it down. Either both hands down or right arm back. Left leg reaches back. 
On your exhale, foot outside of the hand, lift the knee for three, two, one. Extend it back, set it down. One more time. Feel free to stay with the first version, move on to the second or the third version, coming into plank pose. On your exhale, the foot lifts, hover the foot outside of the right hand, lift the knee high for three, two, one, plank pose. Left foot lifts, left leg outside, lift the knee for three, two, one, plank pose, pull your hips back, down dog. From here, just step your right foot forward between your hands, put your left knee down, hands to your right thigh. Once you get here, the tendency is to really shift your hips forwards. And it tends to put a little bit of pressure in the low back. So what I want you to do instead is pull your hips back a few inches so you feel like your hips are more positioned above your left knee. Dig your left knee down into the floor. Dig your right heel down. A lot of times we use the instruction scissor the inner thighs. Uh, my friend Dice uses a term magnetize the inner thighs and that tends to work a little better for me. So just feel like gently you work them towards each other so it's more of a strength-based sensation but it's still a little bit stretchy. It's not like you're just yanking them towards each other. And we're trying to keep the hips more or less facing forwards. Hold for three, two, one. Now let your hips shift forward. Should feel pretty good. Lift your arms high and turn your chest to the right briefly. Try to feel like the crown of the head lifts nice and tall. And take your hands down, step back to down dog. Step your left foot forward, put your right knee down. These things are fogging up on me, I have to abort those. And then pull your hips back. Once you feel like your hips are more or less above the right knee, feel like the left heel and the right knee draw towards each other just a little bit so the inner thighs are just slightly working towards each other. Lift the chest high and feel like you're trying to lift the back ribs tall as you're getting that front leg stretch sensation. Three, two, one. Bend into the front leg, let the hips shift forward, find that feel good stretch. Inhale, arms high, and then just turn your chest. You have a soft little twist happening. Crown of the head is lifting tall. So as you rotate, it's not about pushing into the twist, it's about lifting and lengthening and then just finding what, bo what rotation your body has available to it. Perfect. And then let's take your hands down and we'll step back to down dog. So from here, what we're gonna do is you're gonna shift forward. You're gonna take your right knee over to your left tricep. If this is a lot, you stay here. The rest of you come up onto your fingertips, maybe three, two, one, and maybe your right arm lifts up to the ceiling. Then take your right hand down, pull your right leg up and back, open the hip up, find a feel good stretch. Step your right foot all the way between your hands. Walk it to the right a little bit. Spin your back heel down. Inhale up to warrior one. And one of my favorite variations, Jason Crandall teaches it, or I learned it from him, but who knows where it came from. Turn your chest to the left like halfway. Think of it as like warrior one and a half. Make a fist with your hands so you create more tension. Lift the sideways up. Find a deep lunge in the legs and feel how much softer it is on the low back as opposed to the chest forwards. If you want to look up, go for it. And then hands down, down dog. Yeah, I feel you, Kate, don't worry about it. It gets easier, I promise. Now, as you shift forward, we're just gonna come into the second side. Left knee, right tricep, be happy here. Maybe fingertips, maybe one, maybe left arm lifts high. Try to stabilize through the midsection. Set the hand down. Pull your left leg up and back, open the hip up, lift the leg high away from the floor as you turn the pelvis. Maybe feel like that right hip draws back and in a little bit. And then step your left foot forward, slide it to the left, spin the back heel down. Inhale, lift your arms high. Make a fist, turn your chest halfway to the right. Like you're trying to punch holes in the ceiling, lift the sideways up, find a deep lunge in the left leg, be nice and strong with the right leg, and breathe. So if you're stiff like me, your low back appreciates the freedom in this version. And especially since it's a warm up for Surya B in the way that I sequence, it'd be a little harsh just to face forward. 
Now from here, go ahead and straighten your left leg, turn your foot in, parallel your feet. I'm just gonna turn towards the camera for the sake of filming. With your feet wide, fold forward. Fingertips under your shoulders, flex your heels, shift your hips back as far as you can so you get a little posterior chain stretch. If you feel a lot of tension in the low back here, bend to the knees is fine and lift your butt a little higher. If it feels good to straighten the legs, even better. Set the front foot down, inhale halfway. Take your hands to your hips and stand on up. All right, what do we got here? Warrior ones, oh I know, warrior one sucks for my low back. I'm glad you guys feel me on that. Um, so I have that kind of old school yoga horse background. So I gotta do at least a couple A's and a B. So we just did two and one, but we're gonna do one round of Surya B. And honestly, I feel like the traditional sun salutes are a lost art. I feel like there's a weirdness where teachers just think it's too boring to do the basics and I don't jive with that. So one round Surya B. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale halfway, and then through your vinyasa to down dog. Right foot forward, left heel down. Inhale up, warrior one. Hands down, through your vinyasa to down dog. Left foot forward, right heel down. Inhale up, hands down and optional vinyasa for straight to down dog. Now just take a couple breaths, lift the hips from the hands, think about your goal being creating sideways length so the hands ground, the hips lift, and it's not about straightening the legs, it's about lifting the hips and pressing the thighs back. Now this variation I really like, it can be a little tricky. Step your feet to the right side of your mat, and then step your right foot forward between your hands. You should be lined up on the right side of the mat. Then heel toe that right foot over towards the left side of the mat as you spin the heel down so it's a staggered position. I like the block and it'll stay towards the right edge of the mat. You're just gonna straighten your right leg and come into a triangle pose. So you'll feel it's a little different sensation through the hip. I feel like that outer right hip draws back. You gotta really fight to press to the ball of the foot. Turn the chest quite a bit, feel like you really rotate the shoulders up. And then as you look down, you're gonna bend into your right knee and you're just gonna drop your right knee open towards pigeon and slide your back leg in to 90-90. From your 90-90 position, you can do this with your fingertips down. You could cross your arms, you could reach your arms out, you could reach your arms up. On your exhale, Fold and hover just above your thigh. Draw your right thigh bone and hit back as you reach your chest forwards to get a stronger stretch sensation. And hold for three, two, one. Inhale up, swing your legs forwards and lower down to Ardha Navasana. From here, right knee bends in, arms reach forwards, make a fist. We're gonna work with adduction and abduction of that right leg. So I just want you to, as you lift the chest, press your right thigh into your arm and your arm into your thigh. And then we're gonna take the arm to the inside, squeeze in and press out. And then knees above your hips, lift your arms high. A little bit of stability, keep the arms up, stretch your left leg forward, stretch your right arm back, bird dog on your back for three, Two, one, hug your knees into your chest, come up to seated, step back to down dog. If you wanna take a vinyasa, go for it. Then you step over to the left edge of your mat, step your left foot forward and slide that foot all the way over towards the right side of your mat. Might get all the way to the edge, might get nowhere near the edge, that's okay. The left hand I like to practice near the left edge. The back heel spins down and we come into this staggered triangle. Spin the chest up, lift that right arm high, and really fight to press through the ball of that left foot as you draw the left hip back. And 
One more breath. And then let's bend into that left leg. And once you're here, just drop the knee over to the side. Swing that back leg into your 90-90 position. So it's just an active stretch sensation. Oh, thank you, Isha. I like it too. Nice, Teresa. And this time I'll just go arms out, fold halfway, and just be hovering above the thigh, and then draw that left thigh bone back, reach your sternum forward. You'll feel much stronger sensation through that outer hip stuff. For three, two, one. Come on up, swing your right leg forwards, come into Ardha Navasana. Bend the left knee in, arms forwards, lift the chest up so you get that little upper abdominal engagement. Make a fist to create more tension. Left arm and leg press in both directions. For three, two, one. Now the left arm goes inside, squeeze into the arm, press out into the thigh. For three, two, one. Bend your right knee, in, stretch your arms up. Keeping the chest up, right leg goes out again, keeping the right arm up, left arm goes back. For three, two, one. Reach the arms forward, squeeze your belly in, hug your knees into your chest. From here, come on up to seated, and you're going to come into down dog again. Okay, so this is another twist. I'm pretty, or it's a twist where I'm fairly uh, tight in the low back and hamstrings. So what you're going to do is from down dog, step your right foot forward between your hands. And then once you get here, I like to use a block. If you don't use a block for twisting triangle, don't worry about it. As if we were going into an open twist, set the left hand down. But instead, slide the hand back about six or seven inches. Stay on the ball of your left foot, straighten your right leg, and lift your arm up into this twisting triangle variation. So it's kind of like a hybrid between a twisting triangle and an open lunge twist. And it's pretty nice in that outer leg hip stuff, and it's much softer in the low back if you're stiffer like myself. Take a couple breaths here, really lift that right arm high. And then as I fold, I'm gonna have my block, or one block, on that right front edge of the mat. Instead of just stepping back or taking a vinyasa, I'll step my left foot forwards. My right foot's gonna step onto the block. My left foot's gonna step to the left edge of the mat. I'm gonna fold forward and hold my elbows. This right leg is gonna wanna bend, but instead I'm gonna draw the thigh bone up towards the ceiling. And then I just get to hang, take a few breaths as I stretch that outer leg. And come on up. We'll take a sun salute. Have your blocks handy for the second side. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Down dog with or without a vinyasa. Now your left foot will step forward. We'll keep this distance and the same position of the leg. So the back foot is in crescent pose. As that right hand comes to the inside, we just slide it back a little bit. Straighten the left leg, left arm high. And you'll still notice that you get into that outer hip, outer leg stuff. Turn your shoulders, lift the left arm high and breathe. Now as you start to look down, we're going to place that block towards the front left edge of your mat. I'm glad you like that one, Marie. Yeah, this one feels really good after you run as well. Step your right foot forward, left foot on the left side of the block, draw the left thigh bone up, hang down the center. Couple slow breaths here. And then you'll come on up, place your block to the side. 
take a sun salute. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step back to plank. From here, once you're in plank, you're gonna take your right leg across your body, extend the leg out and set the foot down. Drop your hips about two inches, reach your chest forwards. And your body's gonna wanna lean all the weight into the right hand. Instead, we're gonna make it harder. You're gonna put the weight into your left hand and come up onto your right fingertips. And then from here, we'll set that right hand down. Take your foot to the outside of your right hand. Set your back knee down. As you walk your hands forwards, you're gonna walk them out to the left. You're gonna roll the right foot open, draw that right hip back and in, and take a couple slow breaths. Feel free to chime in if you guys are following along. Your hips should start to feel pretty good at this point. They've gotten into it quite a bit. Take your hands back. Step back to down dog. From here, shift forward, left leg across the body. Foot goes down, hips drop. And as much as we wanna take the weight into that left hand, we put the weight into the right hand, left fingertips. Draw that left hip back, reach your chest forwards. And then as you bring the knee back in, left foot outside of the hand, back knee comes down. As the hands walk forwards, they go to the right. Couple slow breaths. You can play around with kind of rocking the hips. I like to drop that left leg open and really roll the left hip back and in. And then you'll start to come on back. Now from here, what I want you to do is take your feet as wide as your mat and come into forearm plank. So this is for the obliques and your goal, actually I'll just do it with a block on my hip, but your goal is as if there was a block on your hip, you don't have to at home. You don't want your hips to turn at all if possible, but really just as little as possible. So your left arm reaches back alongside your body and then you set it down. Your right arm reaches back alongside your body and you set it down. We're gonna do that a couple times on your own. Last one. And then plank pose. Pull your hips back, downward facing dog. Pedal out the legs a little bit. From here, you're gonna shift forward and lower to your stomach. We're gonna reach your arms back. Let's have your thumbs on the floor, pinky fingers towards the ceiling, and then let's just lift everything up. See how high you can lift the pinky fingers towards the ceiling, reach through the toes for three, two, one. Reach your arms forward, set them down, set your head down. Point through your toes, you feel the quad, little tug in the quads. Keeping your head down, lift your legs up. Reach them back. For three, two, one. Set your feet down, lift your chest up, pull your elbows back like you're trying to touch the waistband of your pants. For three, two, one. Hands come down. Lift your chest for cobra, look past your right shoulder, lift your left foot an inch, see how far back you can reach the left leg. Set it down. Inhale, lift your chest, look past your left shoulder, lift your right foot, see how far back you can reach the foot. And set it down. From here, push up to plank and pull your hips back, down dog. Now take a couple breaths here in down dog. Really feel like the hips lift, maybe the legs straighten a little more, the heels turn out lightly. A couple slow breaths.
and then lower your knees down to the floor. So after those back bends, we're gonna do a little bit, gotcha. We're gonna do a little bit of a counter in our hip stretch. We'll take a forward fold, and then we're pretty much finishing out class. So this is kind of the chill part. Okay, so you're gonna come into a 90-90 position. I'm gonna do this facing the back of the mat just so you can see what's happening, but stay facing the front. Come into your 90-90, and then to start, you'll walk your hands all the way to the right and set your elbows down to get into that mid-back. Try to press your right leg, your right knee, your right foot, and also your left knee firmly into the floor as you reach your chest to the right. Take a couple slow breaths here. Now for this next period of class, your goal is to lengthen your exhale significantly and start to soften your breathing. And then as you come back towards that right leg, you're just gonna fold over the right leg. So a little deeper hip stretch, a little softer in the mid back. It's so nice to have music when I teach on here. I hope you guys enjoy that at home. Makes it a little more real for me personally. and then just lift your chest up and switch sides. So I'm gonna switch back towards the front, but you can just rotate, stay facing the front into your 90-90. Once you get into your 90-90, you walk the hands forward to the left and then out off your mat. You press the left knee and the left foot down, press that right inner knee down and reach your chest out to the left. So you feel that little bit of extra length through the mid back. Oh, I love that, Marie. Awesome, Colleen. I'll take it, John, thank you. And now as you start to come up, turn towards the front leg and just fold. You're just gonna come up. You're gonna be facing the front of the mat. Um, okay, so this is another weird variation that I really like. We're gonna take a forward fold in Janna Shirshasana. Normally, we would have the foot to the inner thigh and fold. Um, a lot of times we talk about hyperextension. Don't hyperextend, but it's like, it's really hard in an active stretch or just in general to avoid doing the things our body wants to do. So my friend Tiffany Russo gave me this one. You'll take your left ankle under your right knee and then the leg can't lock out. So you're forced not to hyperextend and you just forward fold. If you do jujitsu, you'll recognize this. It's like a triangle position for the leg. If not, it just kind of, I guess, be like a reverse figure four because it's the back of the leg. What's happening with the back one? In what, Karen? Come on up and we're just gonna switch sides. Right ankle goes under the left knee so you can't lock out. And then just fold over that left leg. And you'll feel for most of us, especially if you're tighter in the low back, you start to feel a lot more stretch sensation. Uh, for the previous pose, the back one is really just pressing down through the inner leg. and that tends to give a little bit more of like a grounding sensation. Because what happens in those externals, we tend to lean on to the outer hip, I find. <laughs> Thanks, Tony.
Yeah, the 90-91, Karen. Yeah, if you press into that internal leg, it's going to keep the pelvis in a more balanced place as opposed to just compensating. And come on up. Actually, we'll just go back into that and review it for you guys since you had the question. So in the 90-90, what tends to happen is the tighter your hips are, the more you're going to lean into this leg. So me pressing into this leg fires up the inner leg and works the internal rotation, and it's going to keep me in a more upright position because I'm active instead of just kind of sinking off to the sides. So as I fold, if I'm pressing down into this, I get a little inner thigh sensation, and it allows me to really address the length because I'm grounded as opposed to just kind of folding and flopping over, which like a normal pigeon would be. Anyways, so from here, guys, I want you to lay back down on your back, and I want you to go near a wall at home. We're just going to review that internal external rotation that we did earlier and then do a little breath work because I think it'd be weird for me to do Shavasana and have you like watch me lay down with my eyes closed. Um, so from here, you're going to have the block between your thighs, lift your right foot up, and then a couple times on your own, you're just going to take the leg from internal rotation to external rotation. And you fight to get more on each end. So internally rotate and then externally, internal, and external, set it down. Lift your left foot up, internally rotate, and external, internal, and external. One more time, internal, and external. So from here, set your feet down. If you wanna lay on your back, awesome. I think one of the best things about doing yoga at home is you can lay legs up the wall and it's so much chiller for Shavasana. So what we'll do is you'll follow along. You're going to take your legs up and you can put them on like a chair or a couch or whatever. You're really averse to that, just lay on your back. Palms on your belly. And we're going to try to elongate your exhale to twice as long as your inhale. And if you want to keep breathing deep, that's fine. If you want to have a softer breath, that's okay. And so what you're going to do is you're going to inhale for three, two, one, and you're going to exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. In for three, two, one. Out for six, five, four, three, two, one. In for three, two, one. Out for six, five, four, Three, two, one. Reach through your arms and legs. Bend your knees in and roll to your side. Keep your eyes closed and sit tall. If you're at a wall, sit against the wall. I'm gonna sit on the mat, but stay at the wall if you're there. If you're not at the wall, imagine you were. Think about the back ribs climbing up the wall as the sit bones root, the back of the skull lifting slightly. So the crown of the head's at its tallest possible position, which means the chin actually drops a little. Let's take a few moments. Do your best to sit still. And then please take your hands together in front of your heart. Bow your head down. Lift your head up. Open your eyes. Namaste. So thank you guys so, so much for joining me. Again, my name is Calvin Corzine. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram, Calvmonster. I know it's a silly name, but whatever. Um, and then I have a bunch of stuff on Alla Moves. I have a whole core program, Core Max Challenge, that just released this week. It's a butt kicker. Um, 
yeah, and then just shoot me messages. Anything you guys like, didn't like, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Have an awesome day.